You know, last week we spent time reflecting upon the lie about our identity in the sense that I am what I do. And the truth about who we really are, beloved children of God, created in God's image and likeness, regardless of our imperfections. The Lord loves us perfectly because he has created us. So this week, I want to reflect with you about the third lie shared from the late Henry Nouwen, which says, I am what other people say or think of me. I am what other people say or think of me. You know, because of our social media and our modern technology, it's never easier to know what other people think of you. And we buy into the lie that popularity or approval or acceptance from others and that all of that defines us. And if you think about it, the whole marketing industry plays upon this reality. They try to sell us things that will make us feel better about ourselves, right? To make us look better. You know, things that we all need to make us more popular or more accepted, right? And do you ever notice that oftentimes young people act like each other, right? They talk like each other, they dress like each other. They think like each other. Why is that? Well, I think it brings them security, right? It's, they feel secure when everybody can be the same. The reality is that people do care what other people say and think of them. And the sad reality is that when we buy into this lie, I am what other people say or think of me, and we live for the approval of others and we don't get it, at times people can die from their rejection. Think of all the bullying that goes on in our schools or on our social media platforms and how many young people have taken their lives because of living this lie, because of bullying and then, then believing it. Friends, one of the most important things you can teach your children is what I said at the beginning, that they are beloved children of God, created in God's image and likeness, regardless of their imperfections. The Lord loves them perfectly because he has created them. Another thing to think about is, is one of the greatest traps in our life is not success or popularity or power, but it's self-rejection. So as soon as someone accuses us or criticizes us, as soon as we feel rejected, left alone or abandoned, it's easy to find ourselves thinking, well, that proves once again that I'm a nobody. I'm no good. I deserve to be pushed aside or forgotten, rejected or abandoned. I mean, how strong in your life and spirit are those voices that tell you that you are no good or a failure, worthless, ugly, stupid, a nobody? These negative voices are so loud and so persistent that they are easy to believe, especially for those who lack good self-esteem, those who lack self-confidence and a sense of inner peace. I mean, just for example, for many people, you know, we can receive a lot of praise for something and then we can receive criticism. But what speaks the loudest? What do we remember the most, right? But the criticism. Self-rejection is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life because it contradicts the Lord's sacred voice that calls you and me his beloved son or beloved daughter, which is the core truth of our existence. This is our truest and deepest identity, friends, no matter what anyone, any other voices speak. We have two choices. We can either live for the approval of others, which is the false identity, or we can live as a beloved child of God, as Jesus did, our true identity. The options are starkly different. One leads to a path of frustration and even despair. The other leads to a path of freedom. Other people only have power over us when we give it to them. You know, at times I think in my own life, you know, I've lived for the approval of others. And to be honest, it's very exhausting and it's depressing. If we are going to give anyone power over us, we should give it to Jesus. 
Each of us has already been noticed. We've been chosen. We've been taken by God to be the beloved in a totally unique, precious, and non-competitive way. Friends, this is the core truth of our baptism, of our baptismal identity. We don't have to seek approval from others. The Lord already approves of us. And this is what is most important. Yes, we're all broken in some way or another, and we all are in need of healing. But we must reject the lie that brokenness is a barrier to being chosen and blessed and loved. Jesus can teach us this. He can show us this. He came to heal the brokenhearted. So in the season of Lent and this, during this next week, I invite you to take some time and contemplate the beauty of Jesus on the cross, the place where he was rejected and abandoned. Because when we contemplate the beauty of Jesus on the cross, we also become aware of our own poverty. We become aware of our longing to be loved and healed and liberated. And if, if I run from my own poverty, then I can't make a return of love. Any love will become self-focused. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet perfected in love. That's John, St. John tells us that. We all have secret fears to face, don't we? But the fear that we are to feel as Christians can itself be a work of grace if it turns, us, turns our gaze back to Jesus. So allow the fear in your own lives to throw you back into the love of God, helping you to trust in his mercy Thereby, thereby destroying the fear itself. I don't know who said it, but, but fear is the proper servant of love for imperfect saints. Isn't that nice? Fear is the proper servant of love for imperfect saints. So in this next week, take some time with the Lord in prayer and reflect upon how we have bought into this lie that I am what other people say or think of me and ask Jesus to deepen in your heart the truth that you are a beloved child of God and that is all that matters. You'll pray with uh, John's le first letter, chapter four, it's verse 16 to 18. And also, again, pray with uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter three, verses 13 to 17, it's the baptism of Jesus. But allow yourself to hear Jesus saying to you that you are his beloved son or his beloved daughter. And we'll see you next week. May God bless you.